Please welcome now to the show the former Attorney General of Kansas, Mr. Phil Klein. Uh, Phil, how are you? I'm doing great. Pleasure to be with you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you so much for um, for coming on the show. So lots to talk about. I kind of want to get your just kind of 30,000-foot overview where you think we are. But I'd like to ask you specifically about the news tonight that John Solomon from Just the News um, broke right here on Real America's Voice, that we have this Detroit City worker whistleblower that claims ballots were ordered uh, backdated and the FBI is probing. Seems like kind of the first specific allegation in Michigan of possible systemic uh, acts here. So what do you know about this? And kind of give me your thoughts on where we are. Yes, well, uh, that a person has come forward who was there and claims that she was ordered to backdate the receipt of these ballots. And and there are also other problems that have been confirmed, specifically in Detroit, where officials are maintaining that they have the right. Now, I want you to understand how this works, gentlemen, is they have the right with ballots that can't be read by the machine, somebody spilled coffee or they're torn or whatever, to take those ballots, set them down, pull out a new ballot, actually fill it out for that voter who isn't there, toss the old one, feed the new one into the machine and count it as a ballot with only Democrat officials present and nobody watching them, no Republican to sign off. They're keeping them in the penalty box far away. And now they're saying, trust us. This is like if we were playing poker from our days in high school and I was, uh, you were calling me on my hand. And so you laid down your cards and the money's on the table. And I say, you know what? I won. And I took the money without showing you my hand. That can't be the way this works. That's why these laws take the people who are vested, Republicans and Democrats, and require both to be present. Because I'll tell you what, after this is done, the recounts only validate the fraud. In other words, if the counting initially is fraudulent, these old ballots disappear, things disappear, they rip off code numbers so you can't match up ballots, things like that during the count. So the recount only takes what the machine count is and looks at the ballots that are there and looks at how sometimes people voted. But if it's Democrats filling out ballots with no one watching them, that means nothing. And so that's the game they're playing. And they're trying to get America to believe it's best right now. Once a play has been called and there's questions about whether there was an illegality on the football field and the team rushes up to get the next snap off before somebody throws the red flag, that's what we're doing. And we have plenty of red flags on the field. So the, the Vice President Biden shouldn't call the next play like he's doing. The Democrat Party shouldn't. They should insist on honest, fair elections and that the legal process play out. That's not happening. Yeah, they're putting you in the closet and then say, okay, yeah, prove it. Um, so let me ask you the overall arching question that we've been spending a lot of time on. So you have the state legislatures who are supposed to be the end-all, be-all in all of this, setting the rules for how these elections go. And I keep hearing all the talking heads everywhere. Count all the legal votes. Count all the legal votes. So here's my question to you. What are the legal votes? The the votes that are under the umbrella of the last set of rules that the state legislature actually said this is how it's going to go? Or is it under uh, when the governor said, "Ah, I'm going to change it, or the election board said, we're going to change it, or even the court, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania said, we're going to change it. Have them come in three days. Have them come without signatures. What are the legal votes? Well, that, that is a great question. And I, I will make a general observation. And that is that we shouldn't be surprised that those who helped usher in the summer of lawlessness have now brought us a fall election without the rule of law. In fact, they're claiming the ability to be lawless. And I would say this, the Constitution is very clear The time, place, manner of elections is vested in state legislatures and in Congress as it relates to federal elections. The laws are clearly understandable. But but let me, if I could, go from 30,000 feet to about 60,000 feet on, on what you're asking me. Sure. We have seen in the last seven months in America is predominantly blue state governors say, I'm no longer part of the lawmaking process. I am the law. What I wake up and say is the law. I can tell you how close you can stand to somebody. I can tell you specifically how you have to wear your mask. 
I can say that you have to be away from a loved one as they're dying, that you can't have a funeral or a wedding, that we must quarantine the healthy rather than protect the vulnerable. I'm going to shut down businesses. I'm going to tell you how close you can sit to one another. And even though the legislature can function, even though the American people are smart, you are too stupid to have the science brought to you to allow the democratic process to say how we should act and live. These emergency powers they're also using to fundamentally reorder elections. They have suspended election laws because of COVID. They have said it's too dangerous to get a witness for your absentee ballot. It is too lengthy of a time to compare signatures on absentee ballots. We have to have ballot harvesters, even though the law doesn't allow it. We're going to take money from Mark Zuckerberg and pour it in to the central city of Philadelphia, where Zuckerberg money through a charity is paying the election judges' salaries. And we're going to set up in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, which is predominantly Biden country, we're going to set up a drop box for every 4,000 voters so they can vote. But out in Trump country, in the counties, we're going to set up a drop box for every 72,000 voters, one drop box for every 1,100 square miles, while in Delaware County, we have one for every four square miles. And they're calling that the law. It is not. It is lawlessness. It's the privatization of elections. It's big, powerful tech and money actually buying local election offices and telling them how to run the election. Gentlemen, this is a real test of who we are as a nation. Yeah. And if we allow this election, whoever we swear in, if we allow this election to stand without further investigation and getting at the truth, we've become a different country than you and I know and love. I'll tell you the other thing. I'll bet when you think about our Constitution, the framers of the Constitution could have probably never imagined courts uh, with the power that they exercise today. What you see what's going on here, even in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, getting involved and setting rules. and uh, They could never have imagined courts that exercise the kind of power that they do today, don't you think? Yes, and, 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 and actually, the Supreme Court of the United States historically has been very good at correcting these lower courts. Um, but here's, here's an issue we have today. Justice Roberts deferred to state courts. There comes a time when state courts rewrite the laws to such an extent that it violates federal rights and the federal constitution. He should accept cert on these issues yeah. regarding the decisions of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. They are creating law out of whole cloth and justifying it under COVID. And they're sitting and there in cert right now still, right? Yes, there are various issues going up right now. Now, it was Justice Alito that said segregate the ballots. And I, I have to say, we just won a decision as well in, in a state court in Pennsylvania that ordered every county clerk to segregate thousands of ballots that due to a last minute order by the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania caused Republican ballots to not be able to be cured so that those Republican ballots were tossed aside in Republican areas, but allowed Democrats to come in in Democrat strongholds and recast their ballots. So those are the kinds of things we're, we're going on. And, and we will get to the courts to get it right, I believe. I hope. Now, the other side is, again, betting that all this process will move too quickly. And, and one of the, you know, it's very interesting. I was a prosecutor and I was a attorney general and I oversaw the Kansas Bureau of Investigation. Everybody that I investigated that was guilty never wanted to share the evidence that they controlled. Everybody that I investigated who held evidence that proved their innocence wanted me to see it right away. Now, we look at what's happening in these cities where Republicans are supposed to be present to watch and the Democrats are holding their cards against the chest and say, no, we won. Don't worry about it. These 30,000 ballots are for Biden. Don't look. We're good. And if they did it right, they can prove it by opening this process up and they refuse. Now, yeah. I don't need a trained prosecutor or anybody with a law degree to go, wait a minute, that's not right. To admit illegalities by keeping Republicans away, that's an illegality. The law requires them to be there. And then to say, well, look, we've done it right, and I'm not gonna share with you the proof that we've done it right. 
there's a problem, gentlemen, and we need to get to the bottom of it. And I believe that this order of the Supreme Court is a first step. I do not know if there's sufficient time to get to all the stories of what happened in this election um, before this nation moves on. I hope it would. I hope the nation would pause and say, we need to investigate this. We need to have faith in, that our elections are run opera, uh, properly and have faith in the result. But I'm, I'm fearful that well, you have, there's going to be a push. Yeah, I mean, you have the media on the full court push to, to put that president-elect in front of Biden's name and then say oh, everything after that is sour grapes from the other side. But here, here's a question I want to ask you because – um, you know, I think a lot of our viewers on this show, they're working all day. They're maybe not they're paying attention and they know that what's going on, but they're not living it like we do who do this all day. Right. Where should they be looking? You know, we, we see a little fraud here. You see here. But where is the where is the monstrosity of fraud? Where should the public be saying, OK, that had a material effect on the number that could overturn that state that could stand up to scrutiny where it could go to a court and the Supreme Court be willing to take it or a, or a district court would be willing to look at it. Where is that fraud? Where do we look for that? Right now, it is under the control of the Democrats who won't let us see it. They look. They have said, we have violated the law by not allowing Republicans in. Now, they do it in a cute way. They do it in a cute way. They, they, they say, look, we, we've counted all these ballots and we've completed that ballots for other voters in a, a former hockey arena the size of two football fields with 135 tables filling out ballots for voters that aren't there. And you've got a, a Republican back in the penalty box. There was a Republican in the room. That's OK. See, that is an admission that they're doing something illegal I guess and that they're seconds, trying to hide. So 30 seconds. Yeah. And th let me throw this out. We have postal officials coming forward now that say that we have to backdate postmarks to get thousands of ballots to, to election places. We have people inside the election places, whistleblowers are saying we backdated the date of the receipt of the ballots. We have information that can prove whether the box drop, the, the drop boxes were fraudulent. It's called video, make the video available. The fraud is all in those rooms. They're trying to shut us out from seeing what happened. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Keep up the work. We're gonna keep up hope and uh, we'll see what happens. Phil Klein, thank you very much. Thank you. Live from Studio 6B, we're back. More to do. Real America's Voice. What even is that coming up? Plus, Sydney Powell tonight.